Hi guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. So today I thought I'd do a video while I drive home. I've just been and checked the snakes and they're all fine. And I've just been to Barber's to get my hair cut and my beard trimmed and what have you. So I've got a free couple of minutes. Now I am going to stop a Costa. So after half this video, um, I am a Costa, uh, Costa addict. Um, anyway, this video is basically about uh, what I feed my snakes, why I feed them, egg laying, uh, slugs and t-shirts. Um, so bear with me, I'm going to try and keep this video under 10 minutes so it doesn't become boring. Basically, on my last video I uh, got six eggs from a female pastel clown and she was bred to a pastel spot nose clown. Now I said in the video she may have laid some slugs. Now after that video, sorry guys, because I've just had my hair cut, I've got bits of hair all over me and it's doing my head in. Anyway, um, after that video, I was a little bit intrigued to see how many she'd, how many slugs she'd lay, laid in her lifetime because I hatched that snake, I produced that snake, so I've had her from the day she was born up until now. She's never laid a slug in her life. Uh, she's never had a bad egg. She has laid two six egg clutches, which was one the other day, and one a while ago, a seven egg and an eight egg. Now, the eight egg was, the year, I think the year before last. Um, so then I started looking into how many slugs all of my snakes have, all the snakes that I've hatched, not all the snakes I've bought. So every snake I've hatched and kept, it's been kept because it's a hallback. Now if it's a hallback, it gets fed on multis and multis only. Well, the first couple of feeds is mice, then it goes on to multis and stays on multis. Uh, last, up until last season, uh, all the snakes I'd hatched in total over 90 clutches, I've had five slugs. It could actually be three, but the information, um, there's some, when I write my snake stuff, I, I typically scribble it down because I'm always rushing. I, I need to take more time in the things I do, write neater and stuff like that. And I scribble down um, what looks like two slugs in one clutch. Um, but it's crossed out, so it might not even be two slugs. Anyway, so it's either three or five. We'll just run with five for now. So five slugs over 90 plus clutches is pretty good going. Now, I put that down to a couple of things. One, good husbandry. Two, access to clean water. Uh, obviously, good good temperature, what have you. But the biggest, the biggest thing I put it down to is me feeding multis. Now, if you don't know what a multi is, it's an African soft fur mouse or African soft fur rats. Um, some people call them African soft fur rats and others call them African soft fur mice. I do actually think they're a rat, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that. And in Africa, they are almost exclusively uh, fed on them. Now, I just want to nip in the bud. Um, some I heard someone else say, uh, somebody told one of my friends who is now a Paul Python breeder that um, feeding multis is like giving a snake McDonald's. Well, unless you class McDonald's to be a really healthy meal option, you do not know what you're talking about. Um, it's the total opposite. I would say feeding a multi is more like feeding um, a snake, uh, 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 almost like a bodybuilder's diet. So high protein, low fat, with some carbohydrates, whatever, whatever. Um, multis are, are far from a McDonald's. So anyway, I, I wanted to do this video to cover um, why I think I get little to no slugs or none. Now, if you watched all my last season's videos, you will know that I hatched some, I, I, not, I didn't hatch slugs, obviously, sorry. Uh, some of my snakes laid slugs. But if you look at them females, they're not females I've, typically, like nine out of 10 of them will be not females I've produced. And they will be fed on rats. Now, as some of you know, I bought a lot of females off a guy who was leaving the hobby through personal reasons and um, the snakes he fed on rats, I kept on rats. The snakes he fed on mice, I've kept on mice. And the two snakes he fed on multis, I kept on multis. Now, them two snakes didn't lay any slugs last season. Uh, and this season, if I have bred them, because I can't quite remember, because everything's a blur at the moment, I don't believe there will lay slugs. So I'm gonna just cut this video short now because I'm outside Costa, I'm just gonna grab my drink and I will continue it when I get out. Bear with me guys, cheers.
Hello guys, so I am back with my Costa and this new girl made it and it's the worst one I've ever had so I'm gutted but anyway so back to mullets um, so if you're thinking of getting into mullets well not getting into mullets but starting feeding your snakes mullets I'd strongly recommend it mullets are in my opinion the best food you possibly can feed them it's their natural food and they're higher in protein than rats they're lower in fat than rats so what you put in I always say you get back out as well uh, if you feed these big massive rats that a lot of people tend to do because they want this, the ball pythons to be as big as absolutely possible your snake eats a big meal and then it goes to the toilet uh, uh, it, it, it has a big shit basically it goes to the toilet and it's very large now that's because just like us our body processes food in the way that it takes what it requires on the basis of um, bodies get into a routine of how often they're fed now if um, a, a snake a snake's diet is typically fed every seven days now that snake uh, body will take what it requires for the next seven days and kind of dump the rest now with rats because the fat content is so high and typically the rat itself will be much larger than the multi <clears throat> um, they have really big smelly shits basically and one thing that stands out with a very few people that comes to urban constrictors now what i mean by few people is i don't let many people know where it is uh just because i'm a little bit uh a little bit cautious of someone either uh breaking in or i just don't want people to know where all my snakes are because they're not at my home address or in a business facility um and they also don't let many people in just because in case they carry mites on the body or they've got not a very clean collection and maybe one of their snakes is suffering with an RI or something and it passed on to my snakes I am basically paranoid when it comes to snakes I'm very paranoid so only the very trusted come to my snake room now if you haven't been to urban constrictors that doesn't mean I don't trust you it's just that for the most part I don't allow anybody to go in but anyway so I looked at my records and I saw that in my breathing career if, if that's what you want to call it up until buying adult females from somebody else I'd had three or five slugs now I think that's pretty good going but I think it's down to uh, just how good multis are for snakes now if you're one of these people that lives in UK and you really struggle to get multis I own a reptile shop I can get you um I'm not doing this video to tout for business I don't I don't need the extra business and posting frozen food out is nothing but a headache so I'm not doing it to profit from it i'm just trying to help the community out now if you are struggling get in touch there's if you look online i'm sure you can find them as well uh, i really am trying to tell for business so so anyway so when people come into my reptile room they always say not only is it not sweaty because there's air conditioning in there but it doesn't really smell of snakes now this is because partly because the air conditioning is, is, is pushing the old air out and bringing new air in so my snakes are, have always got um, access to fresh air that's how I like them to be but also even if it's even if it's you know four or five days after cleaning day and a lot of my snakes have been to the toilet and I haven't had a chance to clean it up or whatever um, or they've just been to the toilet in the last hour that the, the room doesn't stink of snakes now I used to have all my snakes in my house now I know my house will have smell of snakes um, I used to always have their window open and fans and stuff but for the most part my house will have smell of snakes now it didn't smell bad because I, I did get a little bit paranoid and I used to ask people you know can you smell the snakes uh, and for the most part I say no and that's because multis um, multis um, when a snake's eating one multi gone to the toilet it's typically do you know there's someone banging it bloody back it's winding me up um they are, they are, they've gone to the toilet and it's not big and disgusting and stinking so basically if you're one of these people that are thinking shall i feed my snakes mullets do it yes they cost more yes they are smaller but an adult ball python on a 50 gram multi once a week will do perfectly well now you'll you'll find that they don't fast quite as long as ones fed on rats um so so 
you can you can almost set your watch by them a little bit better. You know they're gonna they're gonna feed almost consistently up until laying. Um, they will go off food before laying, but they, they I find they don't go off food for quite as long. Now I believe one of the reasons snakes go off their food. This is not scientific, but I believe. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons they go off food is to shed some of them fatty deposits that have built up because rats are so fatty and and typically obviously people feed them very large rats as big as we can squeeze down them. Now I am into feeding hatchlings quite big prey items just to get them going. Not in the very beginning but I'd say more like yearlings not hatchlings. Uh, once they're sort of six months to a year um, I will kind of uh, put them on the bigger uh, multis and feed them once a week on a 50 gram multi. But they'll have that then for the rest of their life. Sometimes I'll give them two. If they're quite a large female, I'll give them two. If they're males, I either feed them one, one multi or feed them on mice. So, um, I've lost my show of thought, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so they get multis and they do really, really well. Now, my slug count is extremely low and it's because I give them a natural diet and I do believe it's it's far far better for for them than rats. Now if you're one of these people that says can't afford mullies, it's maybe because you have too many snakes. If you compare owning a snake to owning any other animal, they're actually really really cheap to keep. Very cheap to heat if you heat, heat them on heat mats. If you feed them once a week, you know dogs, I've owned dogs and it's cost me 40 quid a month to feed one dog and it wasn't a large dog it was a stocky dog but not a very large dog so that's 40 quid a month i don't know if i said a week or a month but it cost me 40 pounds so 10 pounds a week now my rodent bill is is far far more than that but i have a lot of snakes i don't have one snake if i had one snake my rodent bill would be two or three pound a week and if you can't afford two or three pound per snake maybe Maybe you've got too many snakes. Maybe you need to ask yourself, am I stockpiling them to, to have more snakes, to breed more snakes, to potentially make more money? If that's the case, and the money you make, you should take a large percent of that out and put it back into the snake. Set it aside for buying multis or something like that. And I believe your egg production will be better, your slug production will be lower, or maybe even zero. So in a nutshell, on a whole, you will be better off because one egg no matter what's inside it a normal ball python or a pastel lesser clown is worth but is worth 100 percent more than a single slug or two slugs or ten slugs you know one egg so if you feed your snakes multis and you get six eggs as opposed to five eggs and a slug and you hatch a normal and you sell it for 25 30 quid that's 30 quid that's 10 multi 10 large multis they only eat 50 well they don't eat 52 uh, meals a year they probably eat about 40 so you're well on your way with paying for them multis so if you're new to new to breeding or you've been around for a while and you have no access to multis or you've found a source for multis give them a try but don't don't feed them for a couple of weeks and then just think, oh, you know, nothing's changing. Because nothing really is. You, you, the, the proof's in the pudding when you've been feeding a snake multis for a long time. And not only will your reptile room smell better, because they'll go to the toilet, it's a lot smaller and a lot less smelly. It really is. It, it's a, a huge difference. My 15, 20 adult females that are fed on rats, two of them make more smell than my 40... No, maybe not 40, 30, yeah, 40, 30, 40 females that are fed on multis. It really makes a huge difference. Power of multis, believe in them, use them, find them, uh, feed your snakes them. Yeah. I, think, I think we owe these snakes at least that much. Now, I'm not against rats. Um, rats work very well for the most part, but when I feel a snake that's been fed on rats all its life they feel flabby they feel a little bit more loose and a little bit more fatty that pastel clown you look at after she laid she didn't look like a bag of death like some snakes do after they've laid they look like a deflated inner tube she's still you can see it in that video she still has 
visual muscle development. She still has a lean, you know, athletic looking body. Another snake that's just laid at a clutch and they've been fed on rats, they look like a deflated inner tube. And that's because they're a fat snake and their body has gone from this size to that size. Obviously that's uh, exaggerated. So they're all loose and fatty um, and flabby, like excess skin. It's really not good for the snake. So please, to, to those who, who are thinking about it, I'm not trying to convert anyone. I, I, I seek no gains. So if you're thinking about getting into mullies, give them a go, but give them a go for a while. And hopefully you guys who, who try it will, will get better results and um, will get better results when it comes to egg laying and stuff. And maybe you'll stick to them and you know, um, you'll love them as much as I do and a lot of breeders out there. They're becoming more and more popular, but they are still relatively expensive and relatively difficult for some people to find. But anyway, right, so the next thing I want to touch base on, um, I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes and it's not happened uh, at all, because I'm rambling. But um, a lot of people on one of my past videos, excuse me a second. So a lot of people on one of my last videos got in contact and asked if I sold the Urban Constrictors t-shirts. I said, no, I don't. Um, a couple of them people have bought some very expensive snakes or a handful of snakes off me so i just i'll just get you one made and i'll i'll post you it and oh we'll meet up and you can you can grab it off me the the demand got so high that i can no longer fund them free of charge um but in the same respect is i'm up I'm, I'm i'm shocked at the amount of people that have asked for one of them t-shirts i'm flattered in some respects because people want to walk around with my company name on their chest and back which um, which is very flattering now if you're one of these people that want to uh, that want a t-shirt because I had a conversation a while ago with a few and I did say I would get some more made well I've been very busy as you know uh, with my new shop and I, I basically I haven't been I can't troll back through every person that got in contact because some of them I can remember some of them I can't because life has been a little bit of a blur lately for a number of reasons. But if you're one of them people that want one of the t-shirts, please get back in contact. I've got them. Like I said, the 20 quid, I'm not making, I'm probably making a quid. I'm not doing it for profit. I'm not doing it for personal gain. I'm doing it because people want them. Now, if I wanted summer and it was, you know, if someone could go get me in, it was going to cost me 20 quid, I'd be very grateful. So if you're one of these people that want one of the t-shirts, get back in contact. I've got a bunch of them made and at Donny Show, I will be selling them for 20 quid. Um, if you want one, come and get one. And quite frankly, I'd be flattered if you do. Um, so thanks to all those who have got them and who are wearing them. And some people have sent me pictures in random places, which I think is fantastic. And I do appreciate that. But, um, and Stu from Cold Blooded Movements, I've got yours, mate. And I'll just get it into post for you. Uh, Stu's done me a lot of favors over the years. He's a top guy. So Stu's getting one free of charge. Um, so I'll be posting Stu's, well, actually it was part of a deal we did. Um, and the other half of the deal is a, is a nice snake for his collection, which I'm looking forward to sorting out for him. Cause he went out of his way one day to go pick me two monitor lizards up and deliver them uh, to my reptile facility. And I do appreciate it, Stu. Um, you're a good guy and I know you've just had an accident and I wish you all the very best and a speedy recovery. Um, I'm, I'm sure me and you will talk soon. But anyway, so if you want a t-shirt and I don't care where in the world you are, either if you're in the States or anywhere else, I will post them out. Obviously, it w the postage and stuff will be a cost. Uh, whatever it costs me, it'll cost you. Um, if I could do them all free, I would, because I'm quite frankly flattered that people would want to wear them. And then very, very lastly, I want to thank Jay Brewer and the team at Prehistoric Pets and the team at the Reptile Zoo because Jay recently did a video and he mentioned, comment down below and I'll pick four people and we'll give you a, a Living the Dream t-shirt. Now, he did mention in that video his father, um, his adopted father, is poorly. And I commented saying, nice snakes, something like nice snakes or awesome snakes. And I wish your father um, the very best uh, thoughts with him and a speedy recovery. Now he picked me as one of the winners, which I was really pleased about, but I didn't comment to win the t-shirt. I commented because I just wanted to wish his father well, because I do actually know Jay Brewer's backstory. 
and he's had a tough start so i want to thank them and if you and i'm sure you are but if you haven't i just pulled up on my drive so if you haven't checked out their channel which like i said i'm sure you have um check out their channel uh the reptile zoo and prehistoric pets he's probably the best reticulate python breeder in the world um he does some awesome things he hatched stuff that well he hatches world's first on nearly every single clutch and he his philosophy in life and his outlook on life uh, from an outside looking in he's very positive very good he's always smiling he's one of them guys that you just love to go to a pub with because he'd just be the center of attention he he laughs and jokes in every video and is almost infectious with with his awesomeness basically so thanks to you guys for choosing me to win the t-shirt i look forward to getting it and i'll rock it for you all and i'll talk to you on the next video cheers guys